The latter part of the year 2004 would see the start and end of what I would consider one of the most underrated series to touch television. Today, we'll look at the show Foreign Exchange. In this first half of a two-part episode, we'll discuss the background, production, and overview of the show. Stay tuned and enjoy! Foreign Exchange was an Australian Irish television series created by John Rapsey, also the creator of the Australian series called Sweat, starring Heat Ledger, and produced by Southern Star Entertainment and the now defunct Magma Films in association with RTE. Its original run was from the 5th of November to the 27th of December 2004 and only lasted for one season with 26 episodes. More on that later in the video. It starred Zachary Garrod, Lynn Stiles, Daniel Fox Clark, Dan Colley, Robbie Sheehan, Peter Deneen, Barbara Griffin, Chelsea Jones, Joel Turner, Greg McNeil, and finally, Kirsty Hillhouse. The series was filmed on site in Perth, Australia and Galway, Ireland. It was directed by James Bogle and Declan Eames. James's credits also include The Sleepover Club, another very popular Australian TV series, and Lucky Leonard while Declan's other works include the Dark Knight TV series, not to be confused with the Christopher Nolan directed movie, and the Neighbours TV series. Declan is originally from Ireland and had worked at the previously mentioned RTE from 1980 to 1996. The script was in development for about four years prior to the start of the production. Filming started in Perth where the first three months of shooting was done. This was followed by about 11 weeks of filming in Galway. The budget was 5 million euros, the series had a 45 person crew and was shot in Digibeta. Producer Ralph Christians is said to have wanted a second season commission, but this never materialized much to the displeasure of fans all over the world, including myself. Producer Gary McCogan was reported to have said that he identifies a similarity between the series and Malcolm in the Middle. I've never watched Malcolm in the Middle and I'm not sure what context he meant it in but if you have seen them both, comment and let us know if you agree. The series follows Brett, an Australian teen who enjoys surfing, and Hannah, a witty Irish boarding school student, as they use a portal which is simultaneously in Brett's basement and in O'Keeffe's college's boiler room to travel back and forth between Perth and Galway. The series starts with Brett stumbling into the girls' locker room after discovering and crossing the portal for the first time. He is believed to be a criminal and a manhunt ensues. He eventually manages to escape through the portal back to Australia with Hannah's help. Soon, Hannah starts to meet members of Brett's family, starting with Jackie in this rather awkward moment. Brett, can you hear me? Cool. <sighs> Hi. And you are? I'm, I'm Hannah. She, she, she's how? Good. Well, now we've established that, you might like to tell me what she's doing in your bedroom at 7 o'clock in the morning. We don't know much about Hannah's family dynamics, but what we do know is that Hannah's dad lives and runs a farm in Dublin. He appears in only one episode. It's hinted that Hannah's mom is no longer around. I didn't mean what I said. About your mum, I mean. It's forgotten. Don't worry. Well, look, any time anytime you want to borrow my mum, it's fine by me. But this isn't elaborated on any further in the series. The series mainly takes place between O'Keeffe's College, which is Hannah's boarding school, and Brett's house, which goes as a restaurant called Belle Clear. In reality, O'Keeffe's College is Castle Hackett, which dates back to the 1700s, and you can actually book a room there, link in the description. And no, I'm not sponsored by them. They've never heard of me, just like you haven't. In real life, Belke Restaurant is the Indiana Tea House at Cottleswell Beach in Perth, where you can go and dine. There are currently refurbishment and expansion plans which would see visitors to the iconic site being able to stay there as it expands to double as a hotel. Characters do sometimes venture outside of these locations into Galway City and Kings Park in Perth, for example. In Australia, Brett's family has recently expanded to include three new people, his stepdad Craig, who constantly tries to bond with him. So look, mate, I understand how tough this must be on you having a having a stepdad moving in. Oh, Craig, it's not that tough, really. <laughs> and I understand the difficulties you must be facing um, emotionally. What difficulties? And I know that I will never be the same to you as your as your real father was. That's okay. His stepbrother Wayne, who he has a rocky relationship with while adjusting to living together. What are you doing? Look, you gotta have to move more of your stuff. There's not enough room. Me? 
You get rid of some of your stuff. Look, bro. It wasn't my idea to move in here. It wasn't mine either. But they eventually warm up to each other. Kill for some of your mum's cheesecake right now. Yeah, it'd be alright, wouldn't it? She's a good cook, Jackie. Yeah, she won the award last year. Yeah? yeah? The restaurant really took off. Didn't think I'd like living there much, you know, but it's alright. Especially since you scored my room, eh? <laughs> yeah, well. Well, kind of. Oh, no need to apologise. I wasn't gonna apologise. That's alright then. Ready? And finally, his stepsister Merlit, who is a smart, outspoken preteen who is convinced that Berth and Hannah are an item. And don't worry, your secret's safe with me. What secret? That you're Brett's girlfriend, of course. Brett manages to get a job as an apprentice to the school's caretaker, Seamus, which creates the perfect cover for him to travel back and forth between Perth and Galway. In Hannah's case, she accomplishes him by initially posing as a surfer in town for a competition, but that cover is quickly blown as she gets thrown off the surfboard not too long after starting to paddle. She gets past this ordeal without raising too many red flags and Brett's family don't ask too many questions going forward. Throughout the show, there were some close calls as several persons came close to finding out about the portal. Seamus, you right? What about the blazers? Where did you come from? Um, I, I, I was just, um... Did you see that flash? Other characters include Cormac, the resident genius, who saved the day on more than one occasion. We also have Martin, who is the love interest of Hannah's roommate, Tara, and who comes from a wealthy family. His father serves on board of O'Keeffe's college. Martin doesn't particularly like neither Brett, Hannah, nor Cormac, and has been known to create mischief and blame it on Brett. Brett soon meets Tara, who will be his crush in the series. Well? Tara, however, has no interest in Brett and quite frankly finds him to be annoying. You're unbelievable, spying on us like that! I, I wasn't, I was just, um, I just heard the music again. What are you doing here? That is, however, until Tara believes he is rich after seeing a photo of Brett and his family in front of their house and then proceeds to start ditching Martin to spend more time with Brett. Then I'm the king of England. Then how do you explain this? I admit, I was fooled by his casual attitude at first, but that's what Australians are like. This ends up making Hannah jealous. And that's why suddenly she's interested in you. She thinks you're stinking rich. Wow. Neat. No, it's not. Because when she finds out that you actually aren't rich, she's going to drop you like a hot rock. I'll see you. Now, where are you going? To the cemetery. Hey, I'll come too. Don't bother. You just stay here and keep dreaming of Tara. Brett makes Tara known the wiser, but this fever dream is short-lived as Martin proceeds to expose Brett by researching the house shown in the photo that Tara had seen and finding out that it is actually Belclair restaurant and not a mansion. He told you he was an imposter. Hey, where'd you get that? This isn't some wealthy family's home. It's a restaurant. I looked it up on the internet. What? Was there a problem? Which doesn't make sense to me personally, since that doesn't necessarily mean he isn't rich. But anyways, Brett and Hannah, well mostly Hannah, try to figure out the mystery of the portal. I wonder if we'll ever figure out how it really works. This leads her to do a number of tests on the portal key. Mm -hmm. Tara is suspicious of Britt and Hannah and think they are up to something, but she can't quite put her finger on it. So I ask, what's the only connection between O'Keeffe School and Australia? Answer, Brett Miller. Brett and Hannah soon become an item. Just kidding. The school's principal, Miss Murphy, is stern and often drops words of wisdom like this. There is nothing serious between Brett and me. And that's the honest truth. The truth is honest, Hannah. That line has stuck with me all these years. Speaking of lines that have stuck with me through the years. What do you mean only me? Oh, well, well Mar Martin said it was a girl, so... <laughs> what? So what am I, a rhinoceros? 
in the same episode, she drops this one too. Um, a word of advice, by the way. Bending the truth means that it is no longer the truth. Don't forget that. Her wisdom is rivaled only by no other than Seamus himself. Don't be such a pessimist. A pessimist is never disillusioned. <laughs> they eventually find out that Brett is the rightful heir to O'Keefe's college. The link swans. The same as above the portal. Do you know what this means? This means that you're the rightful heir to O'Keefe's estate. You joke it. With his great great grandfather being Angus O'Keefe himself, who invented the portal and had disappeared about a hundred years before the start of the series. He had found love in Australia and decided to move there permanently, taking on the surname of his wife, Claire Duncan. He then built a restaurant on top of the basement and named it Belle Claire, which means beautiful Claire in French. The series ends with Brett and Hannah finally becoming an item. And, uh, Psych. Hannah, about that kiss. Don't. Don't ever mention that again. Sorry, I won't do that again. They actually don't become an item throughout the course of the series, but there are hints of chemistry between them. Better get going. Me too. In reality, the series ended on a bit of a cliffhanger with Cormac figuring out about the portal and also figuring out that Ireland and Australia are not the only places you can use the portal to travel to. What's he been doing? Why is he writing the main Irish? Well, he knew that I'd have to translate it for you. Oh, so it's to both of us. Yeah. Can't tell you all the places I've seen since I discovered your little... S what? since I discovered your little secret in the cellar. Well, that's it for part one. Look out for part two where we'll discuss the impact of the show as well as what the main cast is up to these days. Also, there will be a little bonus segment. Thanks for watching and have a great day anywhere you are in the world.